This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Copy Chief Radio. So glad that you're here. And the guy that you've all been waiting for a whole week, Mr. <laughs> Kevin Rogers. Yeah, man. Uh, a whole week. Uh, how did we live without each other? It's so good to see everybody. <laughs> come come, come into my lair. Uh, how are you, my brother? It, it was great to be with you. We actually were together in person. Uh, a couple weeks ago, right here in my town of St. Pete. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was uh, good catching up with you. It was good to see the uh, group that you guys got together. And it was nice to be that uh, that little uh, fly on the wall listening to those high-level conversations you guys had going on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. We'll, we'll get to that event in a second. Oh, and it's great meeting Hudson, your boy. What a champ, man. He's just got that thing. Ah, thank you. Thank you. That was fun to bring him to his first mastermind for all of two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you got you got to start them early, right? Get That's them, right. Get them just feeling that energy in the room. That's right. Uh, so yeah, man, I was on the road for two weeks and uh, what a whirlwind. It, and it's interesting. I was with Ben the whole time, our buddy Ben Settle. And uh, it was really cool because Ben and I had only ever met one time previous to that and, uh, you know, hit it off instantly. We obviously had a sort of a virtual relationship and you know he's been a guest we've been a guest on each other's podcast he's come into copy chief several times and generously uh given his time and answered questions and taught some stuff so but this was um uh two weeks of us being at the same gigs including our own two-day intensive here in st pete so uh it was great to be in the trenches with ben it reminded me of the old road comic days where you know, you're you're just on the road and you're out doing your thing and you'll do a couple weekend clubs and a bunch of one nighters and you're just running into the uh, the same people along the way, but then different people every night. Right. Uh, and it's just a really cool atmosphere. I couldn't do it all the time anymore like I used to. Uh, it's pretty tiring, but uh, man, uh, lots to tell you, lots to share. So I'll give kind of a recap. Real quick, uh, Kevin, how often do you actually hit the road these days? Because two weeks seems like a long time. Yeah, I, I never go back to back like that if I can avoid it. I don't like being away from my family that long. Uh, so this was unusual. But you, it, it typically works out to about, you know, once every six weeks I'm out there. It's somewhere either speaking or at a mastermind or a conference. Um, and, uh, you know, once in a while I'll, I'll bring the family when I, when it makes sense to do that. I brought them to John Carlton's mastermind, uh, in San Francisco back in July and we made it a, you know, family vacation. Uh, but you know, typically it's me away and I'm, I'm traveling again next week, uh, to Ryan Levesque's uh, mastermind, uh, sort of three day retreat. And so this is, you know, more travel than I ever do typically in, in one month. But uh, it's it's invigorating. You feel exhausted at the end and then you get back and you kind of go through your notes and you feel like, wow, this was uh, well worth the effort and the money, you know? Yeah, very cool. And I'm going to take you off track for a second. This is my own personal curiosity. When you took your family to San Francisco, was it really a family vacation or was it you working and them having fun? <laughs> Well, we did turn it into both. Had they only come to San Francisco, it would have been that, right? But we left San Francisco and drove down the coast to, to L.A. Uh, so we took a couple. We stopped in Santa Barbara. And then we spent uh, three nights with our, you know, with my friend Billy and his family. Nice. Uh, so it, it really was kind of a family vacation that way. But you're right. It, it wasn't the same as us going to one destination you know, as a unit and just having our own, it's a different thing. You see this now as you, now that you have a, that's a why full, I'm asking bro. <laughs> a full family, right? It's, yeah. It's like, you know, it, it's cool be, to, you become this unit, this nucleus, right? And you go out. I love going on vacation with my family and it is like a really intimate thing because, you know, when you're out on the road and you're traveling, you just rely on each other, right? Like in, you almost like form this one personality together 
And, you know, everybody's staying in a, in a hotel room together and you're having to share space. And uh, it's, you know, it's a real bonding experience. So um, I cherish that. We, a lot of our best memories are, are from those trips. So, cool. yeah, yeah I, I definitely, it, it would be cheating to call it full-on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you were working, yeah. I, yeah. I got it. I was just looking for tips, man. I didn't mean to take you off track. No, that's no, all good. I think it's, it's valuable because a lot of people are in this scenario, right, where they either have family. And I, I hesitated to, to include the family for a long time. But I'm really glad I did because there was this great moment at the John Carlton Mastermind where my kids and my wife are at dinner with all my my close friends and colleagues, you know, uh, John and his, and his business partner, Stan Dahl and uh, David Deutsch and uh, David Garfinkel. Right. Wow. And all these people that I really look up to and mean the world to me to see them interacting with my kids on a very real level, you know, my kids are 10 and 13 now, so they're having real conversations and my kids are getting to see, uh, that these are different kind of people. Like <laughs> if these are dad's business friends, then business isn't what I thought it was. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? and, and when Hudson gets older, it'll, it'll be the same. Like, you know, obviously that room he walked into that day, that was not, <laughs> that, there's nothing corporate about that crowd. Right. right. So, uh, it's, it's a really cool thing. Nice. So, yeah, I, I recommend it uh, in doses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so started out at the, my trip, uh, started out across the state over there in Delray Beach, Florida at AWAI. Uh, that's the American Writers and Artists uh, Inc. It used to be Institute, but I think you actually have to be an institute to call yourself that. So they had to change it to Inc. But I really respect AWAI. Do you know anything about them, Jonathan? I, you know, I, what I know is that I should have been at that event with you guys. That's, that's about all I know. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, what makes me say that is I think that I know a lot of the people there and I would have been sitting at the big boys table. <laughs> that's what I think. And so it would have been powerful for me to hang out with you, Ben, and meet other people on that personal level who I've talked to. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it is it is some of the best networking you can do in this industry. Uh, it was great to we had a dinner uh, put on by or organized by Marcella Allison, who is a top level A list copywriter, works very closely with people like Paris and, and David Deutsch. And so looking around this room. And, you know, so there's Paris and, and, and Deutsch and uh, Clayton make at our table alone was Ben uh, Settle, myself, uh, uh, James Melnick, who works with very closely with Evan Pagan, uh, Clayton Makepeace and his wife, Wendy. You know, if you don't know Clayton, he is, you know, uh, probably the best uh, full time like working copywriter out there today. Um, up there with, I, I say, I qualify that. I would certainly put John Carlton in that same category, but John isn't doing, you can't hire John Carlton right now, right? Um, so, you know, Clayton has had an amazing career. He's a legend. Uh, who, oh, Brian Kurtz is sitting next to him. Uh, it, it, one of the guys at the table actually spent time with Gary Halbert, was one of his personal, you know, mentees. And just this uh, incredible energy all throughout the room. And uh, it, it's, yeah, it is like nothing else to, to hear these guys tell all their war stories from their copywriting careers and also talk about what's happening right now, like what's converting right now, what still works really well offline. Um, you know, to, to hear a guy like Clayton, Clayton is the you know, the, the head copywriter, a partner in, in Weiss uh, Financial. And they're incredibly active with their newsletters and, you know, really high level top earning stuff. Um, and so, uh, but you know, what's cool about these events, Jonathan, as you, as you saw, it, it, nobody's really talking about business. I mean, y y you're in the business. So, so a lot of things come up, but it's, it's a really casual uh, thing, right? Um, I spent a long time talking to Clayton and Wendy about blue, about the blues. We're all big blues fans and, uh, they live nearby here in Sarasota. And so we were talking about the local music scene 
And uh, Clayton has, you know, this amazing collection. Talk about a cool way to spend your money because this is a kid, who, a guy who grew up broke, right? And so now he has, I forget how many he said, but, you know, I don't know, maybe a hundred um, uh, signed, you know, gold and platinum records. Yeah, yeah, from the from the Beatles, from the Doors, from uh, Led Zeppelin, from Buddy Holly, from Elvis. You know, he just collects these things because he can, and <laughs> it it all has special meaning to him, right? Uh, he he owns the last guitar that Stevie Ray Vaughan ever touched, uh, and so you know, just cool stuff like that. So it's it, it's really cool to to meet people who we look up to as legends in our industry and certainly learned a lot from on a very, I don't know, civilian level and just have like real people conversations about stuff that we're passionate about. And what you sort of learn when you get to hang with uh, people like that on that level is that I don't, I'm not going to say they're, they're just people because they're not, <laughs> they're not just people. The, 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 the curiosity they have about life and the, um, the uh, depth of knowledge they have across a lot of different topics is always really impressive and eye-opening. It, it makes you uh, realize that, you know, there's a reason uh, you and I, Jonathan, and everyone listening to this podcast is an entrepreneur or does have their own business or has the desire to be a freelancer or start their own business because we're not like the others, right? We don't really fit into the box. We don't fit into corporate society or we are not the type of people to climb the the ladder of success, <laughs> <laughs> right? We're the, yeah. we're the misfits, man. We're the, we're the ones who said, there's just got to be some other way to do this. And we figured it out. And that is the unifying bond across every, a person in the room. And so it's, it's, it's like entering a safe space and then you're free to explore personal interests within that. Right. Uh, so wicked cool. Lo love being in those scenarios. And so, uh, the one cool thing and, uh, one of our upcoming guests is going to be, uh, Melanie Saladino. And we'll talk more about that AWA event. Cause she was there with me, uh, working my, my job fair booth. Talk about, switching roles in, in more of a, like, I don't know, official, uh, business sense that, than I normally engage in. It was really interesting to, uh, have a booth at a job fair. I've never been to a job fair, certainly like looking for a job. Cause I just, the idea of it, it, you know, turned me off. Uh, but I will say it, it's an incredible opportunity to meet a lot of writers. So AWAI sets up this job fair. Uh, they do a lot of teaching, copywriting, and want to give the writers, they, their students, the best opportunity to, you know, meet and po potentially work with all the companies who need copywriters. And that a few things that really struck me, Jonathan, was just how many booths there were there. I mean, really? I didn't, oh man, I didn't count, but there had to be 50. Wow. There had to be 50. Yeah. And uh, so that's how many companies are out there actively looking for direct response copywriters. That's a, and, and that's only the ones who know about AWAI or have relationships or went out of their way to show up there. Right. So that's just a small you know, sketch of of how big the opportunity is there for copywriters. And it was really cool to see all these copywriters stand in line and, and talk to people. And a lot of the companies will create, you know, spec assignments, uh, where the, the writers get to pick and choose which companies they think they want to work with. And then, you know, test their chops and send them samples. Wow. That's neat. Yeah, it's really cool. And they, you know, they create a lot of real opportunity for people. Um, you know, for me, it, it, I thought to do it for two reasons. One is I, I wanted to, I'm always want, I always want to meet more copywriters, of course, because I have a lot of people asking me for copywriters and I have a, you know, community that nurtures, uh, talent like that. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, and, uh, but also I wanted to get to know, uh, the companies that were there 
looking for copywriters and find out, you know, what were their pain points with trying to hire copywriters and, and onboard copywriters, because it's a really complicated, it should, it doesn't seem complicated, but, uh, it ends up being a very complicated process. And as you may know, Jonathan, I'm on sort of on a mission to, to solve that and to create better ways for copywriters and companies to work together. Yeah. So again, we'll talk more about that in an upcoming episode, but it was great to be in the trenches. The other cool thing I'll say quickly was, uh, here's what I did. This is the power of podcasting right here, my brother. Everybody that walked up to me and I, at one point, I, I think we had the longest line of anybody in the job fair. No. I'm telling you. It, <laughs> That's it, it, why I should have been there. <laughs> I, I, uh, I look up and there's, there's like 15, 20 people, little, just single file standing there waiting to talk to me. And after I talk and, uh, talk and talk to five or six people, I realize I'm, I'm answering the same questions. So they'd say to me, Hey, uh, it's great to meet you. I listen to your podcast all the time. And to which of course I would say, Oh really? Which one? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so a lot of fans of this show, a lot of people listening to truth about marketing. And of course the one with John Carlton, and it was funny for them all to know me more by voice than anything else, right? Yeah. Uh, and so that's the power of, of, of podcasting. And then they would say, so they would say, so, you know, I know, I know about Copy Chief and I, I think I know what it is, but, but what is it really? And so one after the other, all asking me, what is this Copy Chief thing? And so I th it was great to be able to like pitch my own product, you know, 15, 20 times in a row to the no point kidding. where- I finally just waved everybody over and I was like, look, everybody gather around. And I was just shouting in this already loud room. Oh, to wow. That's like, a great it, feeling. Yeah, it was. And I was just like giving this like impromptu speech about what Copy Chief is, explaining how, yes, it's a training center, uh, it, but it's also a copywriting laboratory where, you know, business owners or freelancers can post up a piece of copy get feedback from the community, implement the stuff they like the best, and then report back the results. And everybody gets to learn together in real time what's working right now in the real marketplace, not theories, not assumptions, not posturing. You know, you can't, there's no faking it in copy chief, as you know, right? And so that was really eye-opening to, to people. They were like, wow, that was, that's, I had no idea that existed. And of course, the third thing it is, is it's a marketplace where business owners come to find copywriters. And so it was, it was really cool for me to pitch it over and over and, and sort of get even better clarity in real time for myself about how to explain what Copy Chief is. So that was wicked cool. And then, of course, the email addiction, two-day intensive, um, uh, Ben and I uh, in a room uh, with our attendees. And I tell you, man, it was cool. It was super cool because, you know, Ben and I just decided to do this event. We didn't have a, a real formal plan for it. We just knew that if, uh, you know, three to six people decided to uh, join us in a room together, that we could really improve their copywriting and particularly how they use email. And so it was cool. You know, wh what I loved about it was we kept it a really casual pace. Like we covered a lot of ground, but it wasn't like, let's see how much information we can spit out at people over the next 48 hours. It was like, all right, come in the morning. Ben and I both sp spent like two hours each walking uh, everybody through our process for how we write uh, email copy. And then we went to lunch had a nice, a nice long lunch. There may have been a margarita or two. <laughs> <Enjoy>. <laughs> yeah. uh, came back, analyzed. Um, we had done a writing exercise with with the group, and so we, you know, very carefully uh, went through each of those emails and pointed out things that uh, we thought were great and some things that they could think about differently. And that was really great for them because our thing was, look, what, what's the one thing we can give them right now that we can't give them virtually uh, or you couldn't give over like a course, which is just real time feedback, right? Question and answer. When you write an email, why do you do this thing or how do you think about this? Or 
uh, and we look at their writing and asking them the same questions. Well, how did you come up with that idea? And uh, here's a better way maybe to make a transition into the into the pitch. Um, so that was super cool. And as you, and then you came uh, uh, to the dinner. We had that great dinner that yeah. night. I mean, what a, what a crowd that was, right? No uh, kidding. You know, Jack Bourne. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, our, uh, my buddy Brian McLeod. Yeah. Who's huge personality. Super funny guy. Um, and, uh, you know, t- just had a great time. So that was great. And then it was on to Brian Kurtz's Titans Masterclass, where, again, Ben was a special guest speaker and uh, super high level people there. So, you know, I guess the message here is, um, look, get out as much as possible. And if I have my preference, uh, I am looking for an intimate gathering of people that I know I can learn from and that can help me. Uh, and you know, if, if, if you said, Kevin, you know, there's, uh, two events next week, they both cost the same amount of money. Uh, and they're both, uh, three days long. One is a conference where there's going to be 3000 people there. Uh, and one is going to be, uh, a mastermind where there's going to be, you know, 10 people there. I'll take the 10 people event every single time because that's where you go deep. That's where you actually have time to, uh, make connections and make relationships that end up being beneficial throughout your whole career. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to go to the marketing RV show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All so, right. We're running long. What's coming up next time, Kev? Yeah. So next we're going to have, uh, Patty Dominguez and, uh, Pamela Herman from create buzz now who are super sharp ladies, uh, who are really great at helping you create deep customer loyalty. All right. Good stuff. Looking forward to that. So that's a wrap for another Copy Chief Radio. We will be back in your earbuds next week. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Chiefs, for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Copy Chief Radio. If you like what you heard here and you want more, go to copychiefradio.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.